Well, we're going to jump right into this conversation today. We started this new series called Warrior yep. on Sunday. The idea of warriors, some people excited about that, freaking some <laughs> people out, but we're talking more directly to men over these three weeks. And I think there's still things that everybody in the room or you watching here can take away uh, for the women in the room to, to consider, consider what does a godly man look like? Uh, how do I encourage the men in my life? Uh, for the young men in the room, hey, what does it look like to continue to grow as a man of God? Or for some of us who are a little older, what are the things that God is still calling me towards that I need to uh, pursue? Right. And uh, so this idea of, of men and the idea of women is a good thing. It's a right. God-given thing. And there's times we need to stop and just uh, affirm uh, who men are or who women are. In fact, at Hume Lake this week, we'll see that. Yeah, so at Hume, our, our students are out there. Hopefully you've been praying for them uh, Friday night. They split the guys and girls right before they, they go off the hill. And they'll just, it's all kind of top secret. But they just try to encourage uh, the men to be men and to watch what, they, what they're doing in their lives. Watch what they're watching and, and just tell them that they're, they're men, that they can be leaders. The ladies have a different conversation. But just like Will said, um, this series is really something that we think is going to impact everybody. And if you're a woman, you know, there's things your your battles you're fighting as well. And we want you to know that you can be a warrior too, as well as encouraging the men in your life. Yeah. We think it really applies to, to everyone. We started with this idea on Sunday. If you saw the first message or you can go back and watch it here on YouTube, um, with the idea that God is a warrior. Right. And again, some people aren't sure, quite sure how to take that, yeah. but uh, for those who are followers of Jesus, the example is always who Jesus is. And we would say he's the ultimate warrior. Right. And we see God the Father even described as, as a warrior. Speak to that for a moment. I just chuckled in because he's an ultimate warrior. Uh, <laughs> a wrestler. Is it like a WWE for a minute? I don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, old good. school. You're All right. an old okay. school wrestling. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, God being a warrior for me is encouraging because that means the God of the universe is fighting for me, that he's, he has my back, that he cares about the battles that I'm facing and the challenges I'm facing. And he's in the middle of that. In fact, there's passages in scripture where God just tells his people to sit back and let me handle it. Watch me move, watch me do things to protect you and to watch over you and to work miracles around you. So for me, it's comforting. I know that our society has, has morphed that idea of warrior into something that might be over the top, but God's not going to go over the top. He's not militant or whatever. Yeah. And so often what we're talking about, we do stand for things. There are mm -hmm. things um, that we have to stand for in our right. culture, but so much of this is the spiritual battle. We are spiritual warriors for those who are um, followers of, uh, of Christ. And so it's amazing to see, you know, who God is in that battle, because the very first aspect for those who would come to follow Jesus and even understand a need for Jesus is we have to acknowledge that there's sin, that right. there's brokenness, yep. that there is a spiritual battle. And so God is a warrior who fights for us and fights that battle. And Jesus ultimately overcomes sin. This is the most significant battle there is uh, in the universe right. and the way we understand it anyway. Absolutely. Um, and so that just, uh, again, so important, this concept of who the warrior is. And so many of the songs, if you listen to the current worship songs or even songs that we've sung in the last couple of years at Community Christian, talk about the battle belonging to the Lord right. or he fights for us. And it speaks to those things and who he is, and it's accurate to, to scripture. And we want to display what a warrior is in the right way. And so we're fighting the spiritual battle. And as we're going to see in the next couple of weeks, our weapons are the weapons of prayer, mm -hmm. uh, of worship, of praise, of being in the, the word. word. It's not necessarily, you know, the physical uh, battle. Yet sometimes it can, it can come to that. There are aspects, yeah. as we talked about Sunday, where we have people in our life to protect. Yeah, we have to we have to stand up. I was thinking about this this idea of protection, and I spent most of my twenties being single. So I always think about young men, and you know, if we talk about there's people in my life that I need to protect, I would I would say if you're single right now, the first person you need to protect is you. Yeah, it starts with your own spiritual life. It's, it starts with what you're allowing into your uh, mind and the things that you think about. And, and are you doing some soul care, even in that season of being single? 
but there's probably some other people too that they could protect as well, right? Yeah, I think sometimes young men will go, well, I'm just responsible for myself. Right. And responsibility is important, you know, to understand that we have responsibility. But for, for the young men who are looking to follow Christ, one, protect yourself, fight for yourself and what is right. Your character, your integrity, every day you choose that, it adds up, it compounds, it matters right. in the future. Like the decisions you make now, you know, play themselves out in the long run. They affect the future. But the other people you protect, you're going to have most likely other young men around you that you're going to have friendships with. And so what are you calling them to? What kind of conversations are you having? Are you willing to get in to the hard conversations about, hey, man, I could see you be better in this area or God has something better for you. Or let's be honest about, hey, these things are sinful in our lives and let's confess them and let's have some accountability and let's look to be something different in Jesus. So you're responsible to protect the other men around you and your friendships. And then we talk about the other young women. Mm -hmm. uh, that are around too. I think that's such an important aspect. Yeah. You know, you might be dating or you might just have a, a community of women around you and your job is to protect them and to honor them and be a man of integrity with them. And then um, if they're going to be dating someone else and you're just being friends, you need to set them, set them up well for relationships in the future. If you're dating them, you need to keep their future relationships uh, in mind as well. Yeah. You may honor the women um, who are around you. Um, and again, whether that's just their friends or maybe you're dating, but you don't know, is that dating relationship going to be moved to marriage? One of the things that's so important to remember, that's somebody's daughter. Right. And that's likely somebody's future spouse. Right. And so honor those people in their lives, right? If that doesn't ultimately become you in that dating relationship, you want to do that right and well. Yeah. Um, there's other aspects of this protection piece. Sunday, we talked about, you have someone to protect, you have a kingdom to advance, the kingdom of God. We have purpose and you have a battle to win. But I think this protection piece is so huge. It is. We need um, safe. We need uh, safe spaces. Right. Yeah. But we also need to know that um, the community around us and even our hearts and our minds that we need to do proactively protect those things. And, and that um, there's something about knowing that you're walking over your community and doing life together with those around you and that we're in this together and that we're watching each other's backs is so important uh, spiritually and even in a, in a physical and emotional way as yeah. well that we yeah. we are creating safe spaces for people. Yeah. I, I think, again, we're not talking about toxic masculinity. We're not right. talking about controlling people. Right. But to understand that we have a responsibility to protect others, we need to step into that role as men. So give me just a, a moment here. What are some things that you do? Some of it maybe unintentionally because you've just done it or people model this to you to protect your wife and children because you, you know, not only as a man, but you're a husband and a father. Um, what are things you do to protect those people in your life? I think it's important as a husband and as a dad that you have uh, outlets with other men, mm. other safe people. So I think we do this for one another. Yeah. Um, try not to take work home. Try not to take uh, the emotional part of work. Yeah. So a conversation goes bad. Again, email that I don't like, I, you know, something. I'll talk to you about it. I don't necessarily bring that into the house if I can help it because then then my kids and, and my wife have to carry that as well. And I'm probably not going to give them all the context. And then, um, I don't know if you know this, but wives and moms can be very protective, even of us. Never heard that. And then, and then, <laughs> they, and then they, they go into a space that I have to walk them out of because I might let go of it a lot sooner than they would. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so I think you have to, all that's to say is you have to have a, a community around you, um, that you can go to in times of frustration or fear or stress or whatever it is. And and work it out with them so that you're you can be healthier at home. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm saying that. Yeah. What you bring back into the home, finding the right outlets for that really, really matters. You know, one of the simple things and again, we encourage our team to do all the time, or encourage everyone to do is like I have young kids in the home, so do you. Yeah. What are we watching? Yeah. What are we consuming? I'm protecting their hearts, I'm protecting their their minds, I'm protecting, you know, who's who's teaching them and what's coming to that, you know, in your school, you should know what curriculum right. is being taught. Like I need to be aware of that. And again, it's not a controlling thing. No, I'm responsible for these children and the raising uh, of them. So over the next few weeks, we're going to continue to talk about some of these themes. Yep. 
one of the themes we touched on Sunday, but it's going to come out in the next couple of weeks is there's a battle to win. Yeah. And so, yeah, just well, Christianity is about victory. And you come to Christ and you are victorious. The, the, the end game is already done. We talked about that a little bit with the Philippians series, that, that there's a victory already won, but we are still fighting some battles here. But we need to live in a state state of, of victory. And so there are battles to win, but I guess knowing that God's fighting with us or we have a community around us, we know that victory is available. Yeah. My hope is that God would make it clear to you over the next couple weeks. What are the battles you need to fight? Maybe that you've given up on. Maybe there's some addictive behavior. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some attitude things, some things relationally. You thought, I'll never fix this. No, God says he fighting for us can overcome that, that there's victory. And I want health for you, particularly for you men, because when you're healthy, you lead well in your home. Good things come out of that. You lead well in our churches and our community. And when men are strong and founded in the word and believe there's victory there, we see something powerful happen. So as we get ready to for the next two weeks of this series, I just want to stop and pray for a moment as we close this out. Yeah, good. Father, I am grateful for uh, Justin and our team and uh, the men in our church that are pursuing you. And Father, we really believe that you've given us responsibility to protect others, not just our own family, but even as a church to protect, to care for one another. We believe there's a kingdom to advance. And we do that together by living out your mission of helping people find you. And God, we also... Uh, just believe um, in this, that the battles that we have, that you've given us the ability for you to overcome them. So God, I pray that we would not quit, that we would keep pushing, that we would keep fighting as warriors for the better things that you called us to in your son, Jesus. God, reveal those things to us and give us wisdom of how to move them forward as we speak on these things the next couple of weeks. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for uh, listening and watching, and we will see you this weekend.